Hello, friends. It's Chop. This country had two years of Ronald fucking Reagan. Two terms. Two terms of Ronald fucking Reagan. Two terms of George W. Bush and the war on terror and the war in Iraq. Thank you, Joe Biden. Um, so, like, yeah, just don't be blackmailed by this. Just, like, don't be, uh, don't allow yourself to be cowed by what is a an, an instrument of ideological discipline to get you to not trust your instincts about what you want and who is best for this country. And, and that's, a vote for Biden is a vote for Trump. Absolutely. Just respond, just respond with that. It's like, nope. He'll lose. He'll lose to Trump. And if that's the case, we told you in 2016, we told you again. Mm -hmm. We tried to give you every chance not to do this to yourself. But, I mean, I think we're basically seeing the Democrat. Honestly, I think the Democrats' real game here is 2024. I mean, they'd be happy to win the election now, but they just, they would rather lose absolutely have bernie win absolutely that, they would so like lose. these are the same people that are telling you it's your fault those kids are in cages yeah well guess what obama built those fucking cages and we tried to stop you from nominating hillary clinton last time it's your fucking fault so don't fucking don't don't fucking try to yeah. scold or blackmail me for you're the one that got him elected yeah you did it you did you did this that's you know, on you i'm yeah. thinking about this so the line among established Democrats is the reason they don't like Bernie is nothing to do with the fact that his policies threaten the uh, interests of their donor base and, and actual bosses, but because he can't win, and that's what they care about. If that were true, uh, if, if they really do think – I mean, obviously it's both of those things, but their public one is he can't win. If they really think he can't win, if they actually think he can't win, uh, in addition to thinking he's a threat to their party, then they would kind of just like let him get the nomination. And then lose, and then that's it. That's the end of the whole thing. And you know, you get to you, you, can, you don't have to talk about McGovern anymore. You can talk about Bernie and like put the left on its back yeah. uh, foot for another forty years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I think that the fact that they're willing to do this, that they've talked openly about uh, taking giving the nomination to somebody who didn't get the most delegates or votes uh, at the convention, uh, splitting the party uh, in at least the short term, and guaranteeing a loss means that they don't, even at the highest levels, truly think he would lose. Yeah. And more important than well, that. Well, they, they stop Bernie. Why? What are they trying to stop? Yeah. And, and they and, just play long game, let and, him lose. Exactly. And, then... and, like, they could even help him lose. They could do rat fucking and they could, like, sabotage him, which they would if he got the nomination. But clearly they don't think that they're good enough at that either to ensure that he would lose to make the to put the risk of him getting the nomination. Which really does show you just how fucking scared of him they are, and how much, uh, and how much power he really could in a very short time be able to accrue and direct. And like that power, it just comes from like Amber, like what you said, like that he is offering things that we all need and deserve, mm -hmm. and he's saying like we can have this. You you deserve this. You deserve the safety and security of health insurance, of an education, of a roof over your head. And sadly, guy. there's a good chunk of the Democratic Party who just basically is willing to say, I don't want, we don't, we don't want anything better. Mm -hmm. we, 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 either you don't deserve it or we don't even want it. It's not a party. We don't even want anything to change. We, we just want a Democrat in the White House. It's not a party. I, it's not a party. It's yeah. a machine of elites or whatever. But... It's also a very bad machine. Terrible machine. It's one of the worst. Functioning constantly. It's it's the Democratic Party might be. People talk about how the Republican Party is like this monstrous tuber of of, of like vile uh, authoritarianism and everything. And of course it is, but the reason that they're in power is because of the Democratic Party. Yes, yeah. they represent like so. Who is, who is the worst? At least have party discipline. And, and, but they're also, as everybody keeps pointing out, keeps yelling about, they are a minority view. Yes. You know? yeah. And yet they run everything. And that's because they are running against Democrats. Yeah, well, they have a fucking party discipline. Remember all those never Trumpers? Remember yeah. how they shut the fuck up and yeah. got in line? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's because they have a unified interest. They have a unified interest at the top. The Democrats don't. And then when those splits become more uh, severe... Uh, they just collapse because they uh, have no way of resolving the conflict. No, they are, they are a minority view that is allowed to control every lever of power in this country because the Democrats let them. Yeah. yeah. And the Democrats are not just 
oh, they're just it's a combination of like, yeah, they're, they're too fucking weak and incompetent to beat them. But it's also that they're complicit in it. Of course, yes. they're complicit in it. They are they are they are accomplices in the same goal that serves the same interest. I mean, at the, the base- Republicans are scum and the Democrats are dumb scum. I mean, and they're and they're even more corrupt and cynical scum, because at least the, the Republicans, for the most part, especially now with like the new generation of, you know, post Tea Party, uh, post Trump true believers in Congress. A lot of them like really believe all that shit, you know, yeah. uh, Democrats. They're based. There's almost not. There are a handful of elected Democrats who actually believe anything they say to their rube fucking supporters about wanting to uh, give them get health care or any fucking other thing. They're literally lying because their job is to provide a uh, a venting point uh, and a, and a, a pseudo sen- a sense of pseudo control to people who just watch as. The, their lives get worse and worse at the direct uh, uh, result of government policy. Their job is to justify the existence of a party, which is job is to justify the existence of a party yeah. whose job is to... It's just a fucking circular yeah. logic. And, and that's end, why they their, need the their Republicans. Their job is to carry yes. out the policies of of uh, of capital. Yes. And, the, and all of this is to disguise that imperative. Oh. And that's why the Democratic Party must be taken over or destroyed. And like, even in the worst case scenario, they actually take it from uh, Bernie. There's guess what? You don't get to just black pill and go home then either, because then the job is to destroy the fucking Democrats. Yeah. And um, it'll be a party either way. Yeah. <laughs> you get to be jokerified. That's what matters. <laughs> and it's so fun. Just look at Liz. She's having a great time. <laughs> She's having a great time. Well, maybe not right now. No, not right now. Like, I'm very tired, but we're in the running. Yeah. And we got to keep running. Yep. And um, no no wild-eyed triumphalism, but also no gloom and doom, because shut the fuck up. That's for babies. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you might lose. Yeah. Be brave. I've lost over and over and over again, and I keep doing it. Like, sorry, that's just the history of the left. We lose more times than we win. Get that fucking boulder up the goddamn hill. But this is, again... The biggest opportunity I've had in my lifetime and the window for success is wider and wider. I just I can't believe how close we are. A tie after a tie basically a tie in delegates after Super Tuesday with uh what more than half of the delegates still to be allocated, I believe. Well more than half. Well yes. more than well half. More. I mean, my Christ. I saw uh, an analysis that said that if Bernie beats uh, uh Biden collectively by three points in the rest of the states, he will win. He will go in and also into keep in mind that the, the states that this election that this primary are going to move to now are way way better for Bernie Sanders than like the deep South states that Biden racked up. Yeah, we're going to make them. Like we're talking about the Upper Midwest. Michigan is the next one. Yeah, I I expect Bernie to do strongly there, but like just mm-hmm. keep at it. I'll just I'll I'll just last thing I'll say is when I started, the real is today right now, and if you're a Sanders supporter or you're, you're feeling down in the dumps, or you feel like you've taken a hit, then this is the test. Can you take the fucking hit and keep fighting? Indeed. You know, we've been on the road for uh, about 68 weeks now, and <laughs> as this election tour uh, comes to a close, I just want to reflect on just far, far too many talented, diligent people that we've met on the campaign trail in Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and all throughout California. Many people who have been at this have been organizing for months now. People who say, told us that they listened to something we said on this show and they just immediately packed up the car and they drove to Iowa to canvas in, you know, 15 degree weather. And in Iowa and New Hampshire and Nevada and in California, they did their jobs. They delivered. They're the reason why we are in this. If it hadn't been for everyone chipping in in their own way, doing what they can, even if that's not very much, if it weren't for that, we would not be here as close as those early states have been and as, as tough as Super Tuesday was. And right now, everyone's contribution is important everywhere they are 
wherever you're listening to this from, if it's in the continental United States, uh, Hawaii, Alaska, one of our uh, wonderful, wonderful territories that we love so much. Shout out to Marianas Island. <laughs> we love them, folks. Uh, know that the campaign is coming to your neighborhood and that it matters exponentially more, exponentially more that you do something in your neighborhood that you, you, you even if you can just walk your block once or you can talk to a few of your neighbors or your family members, uh, to just start snagging some votes for Bernie Sanders. And now that it is a, a week-by-week delegate fight, I want to just give you a little preview of what's coming up. In six days, the campaign goes to, let me see if I got this at the top of the dome, Idaho, North Dakota, Washington, Michigan, four states that Bernie Sanders won in 2016, uh, as well as Mississippi and Missouri, two states that Bernie Sanders lost in 2016. And th- these are going to be important states. Everyone is going to look to see that Bernie Sanders can win in Michigan again. Uh, Missouri, Washington, two delegate-rich states that you know could stand to be pretty close this time around. Uh, if you're there or you're near there, you know, pitch in. Even in a place like Mississippi, which no one expects Bernie Sanders to win, uh, at this point, it's not just about technically right. getting the most votes in a state right. so that you can, you know, paint that state whatever color that the networks use. Uh, it's about getting bounces. And if there's a difference between Bernie Sanders getting, say, uh, 25% in Mississippi and 35% in Mississippi, that difference means delegates. Yep. And every delegate that you take away from Joe Biden is a delegate that you give to Bernie Sanders. So no matter.